Good evening, I'm Emily Druby, and this is your Currents News Update. Tonight, Governor Andrew Cuomo is fighting for his political life. Across the aisle and across the country, lawmakers demanding he resign or be impeached. I think he should resign. President Biden calling for New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's resignation after a damning attorney general report found Cuomo sexually harassed at least 11 women. Everything is, is, is documented. Things were very well corroborated. It was a culture where you could not say no to the governor. Meanwhile, new and renewed calls are now growing for Cuomo to step down. And I do believe he should resign. We continue to believe that the governor should resign. Accepting responsibility means stepping down. So I don't believe him and I don't want an apology. It's not necessary. It's fake. At least 55 of the 63 members of the New York State Senate, which would vote to remove Governor Cuomo if he were to be impeached, have called for his resignation. Cuomo's attorney is slamming the attorney general's finding as unfair and inaccurate, and the governor is defiantly denying them. I never touched anyone inappropriately or made inappropriate sexual advances. On top of these demands, prosecutors in Albany, Manhattan, and Westchester have all opened criminal investigations into the governor. Cuomo is also facing probes into nursing home deaths during the height of the pandemic and his $5.1 million book deal. Also tonight, it's been one year since this explosion. The Beirut blast killed more than 200 people and displaced a capital city. And today, Lebanese people protesting in the streets, pushing for answers. So far, an investigation has failed to provide them. Just this morning, Pope Francis called on the international community to continue donating and praying for those who lost loved ones. Currents News' Jessica East Hope speaks with one of those people. Dr. Nazih al Adam calls it an apocalyptic scene, something out of a movie. I was running and the threat from the windows coming up on me. That was one year ago. He was 20 miles from Beirut, but his 36-year-old daughter, Crystal, was in the city. He called her immediately. She told me, please come and save me. I'm dying. Crystal spent August 4th, 2020, helping someone else. She bought her neighbor, a 10-year-old boy, an iPad so he could remain in school during the pandemic. But she was supposed to be on her way to her parents' house. I stopped everything. Christelle was my last patient. After her death, the Catholic family and Crystal's friends started a foundation in her name, sponsoring children in need of an education. They even renovated her apartment, transforming it into a school center. Later this month, inside the room where she died in her father's arms, a statue of Crystal will be dedicated alongside the Pieta. I imagine myself like the Holy Lady with her son in her arms. No one has been held accountable for the Beirut blast. Dr. Nazih says Crystal's legacy speaks for itself. Never stopping the fight for justice will be his. Jessica East Hope, Currents News. In New York, the Diocese of Brooklyn raised $91,000 to help with Lebanon's recovery. Bishop Gregory Mansour, leader of the Eparchy of St. Marin of Brooklyn, has been spearheading the effort. Our people are doing everything they can to, to assist their family members and the Catholic institutions of Lebanon, which are running on empty to serve the poor. Bishop Gregory says Bishop Nicholas de Marzio has also been a huge help in Beirut's recovery, sending money to the bishops of Lebanon and Syria. Finally tonight, turning to Tokyo, a Catholic high school student now an Olympian. Sydney McLaughlin took the gold in the women's 400 meter hurdles in a nail biting race. It's going to be Sydney's time again, and it's a world record again. McLaughlin overtook defending Olympic champion and teammate Dalala Muhammad, setting a new world record. McLaughlin is a graduate of Union Catholic High School in New Jersey. She credits God and her family for getting her to the podium. That is this Currents News update. The newscast will be back to its full length this fall when we move to our new studio. I'm Emily Druby. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news.